My world moves virtually at the speed of light, spinning spirally in space towards a future that's full of promises, full of dreams. I choose to be real with my dreams. I choose to find myself in a place where my dreams are beautifully shaped and nurtured. A haven of true knowledge and light. A place where I learn to live my life. Situated next to the Philippine seat of power, with campuses in the country's major hubs of business and commerce, culture and history, Centro Escolar University is the place where the highest forms of human thought, talent, and creativity blend together for a unique learning experience. The Scholarian education is anchored on the university's twin philosophy, Scientia e Virtù, science and virtue, the pursuit of knowledge guided by the highest ideals of humanity. The Scholarian education produces graduates who are empowered by timely knowledge and skills and inspired by timeless virtues to contribute to human and societal development.
this is where my dreams are set in motion and begin to turn to reality. The ultimate place of an unforgettably exciting and life-changing education. CEU is my choice, my future, my move. The University Convocation 2020 
Ang bituin at araw niya kailan pa may di magbibili Lumpan ang araw na huwag kapit pang sita Buhay ay langit sa piling ko Ang hikaya ng pagkay mga api Ang mamatay na Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our host, Professor Ricky Rosales. Hello, fellow Escolarians. Good afternoon to all almost 500 viewers that we have in Facebook because we are being seen live via Facebook Live. And of course, we are also being seen live now in YouTube and to our exclusive CEO community via Workplace. I hope that our 13.7 thousand members of the Workplace community are all watching us right now. Welcome to this year's University Convocation. And this event is brought to us by Centro Escolar University's Presidential Committee on Culture and the Arts, or PCCA. You know, we are very, very excited this afternoon to bring you this year's convocation, not only because of our relevant and meaningful theme, Ways to Wellness, but because this is our first ever virtual university convocation. And you know, CEU is uh, celebrating our 113th founding anniversary this year. And this year is our 11th year of conducting the university convocation. So before anything else, let me just call on my partner, my co-host for this afternoon, no less than the head of CEU Conservatory of Music, Professor June Iran. Sir June, good afternoon, hello. Sir June, I think your, your microphone is uh, on mute mode. Yes, good afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to uh, our University Convocation 2020. We are uh, live at, from, from Facebook, Workplace, and YouTube. And uh, you viewers know. right now, for you. We have 500 viewers based on oh, my yes. Facebook. I know, I can see that, yes. <laughs> and you, you mentioned a while ago that this is the 113th of CEU. I am yes. proud that this is also the 113th of CEU Conservatory of Whoa. Music, September 9th. Yes. <laughs> anyway, sir, I'm right. very happy. This is the first uh, uh, online university convocation. So again, we welcome everyone uh, to all our viewers in Facebook Live, to all our viewers in YouTube Workplace. Welcome everyone to our 2020 university convocation. And to start the ball rolling, uh, Sir June, let's now call on the mother of CEU, our beloved um, President and Chief Academic Officer of uh, CEU, no less than our President, Dr. Maria Cristina Padulina. Ma'am, good yes, afternoon. Uh, before, uh, before we uh, call on our President, um, yeah. uh, I would just want to say something about the, uh, the PCCA, the Presidential Committee. Ah, yeah. of yes. Yes, please. yes. And uh, the committee is composed of board members from the, the three different campuses of the university, uh, the CU Malolo, CU Makati, and of course, CU Manila. And uh, of course, highlighted here is the, uh, the cultural groups inside the CEU uh, Folk Dance Group, wow, this group is really amazing because uh, they are really trying to promote our uh, uh, culture, folk dance uh, culture in the country. Yeah. And uh, of course, they are uh, trying to follow the steps of uh, our national artist, uh, Ramon Obusan, National Artist yeah. for Dance. And yeah. we have the CEU Concert Band, one of our uh, uh, prominent uh, uh, band Premier band uh, in 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 the in the in the area of uh, the area university belt, no, and of yeah. course uh, we are proud of the three choirs: the CU singers uh, Malolos, CU singers Makati, joining and us. CU singers Manila, joining us later on. Yes, yeah. right. And sir. of course uh, the PCCA mm. is uh, is uh, chaired by our uh, uh, 
uh, very uh, energetic uh, BP for Student Affairs, Dr. Carlito Biola. Yeah. And, and, and of course, uh, this is being con uh, consulted by the University President, Dr. Maria Cristina Di Padolina. I think yeah. uh, our president is ready already, sir. All right. Let's call again. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Escolarians, the mother of CE, or beloved the president, the chief academic officer, Dr. Maria Cristina Di Padolina. Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I was disconnected a while there. Uh, and uh, I'm greeting everyone from our house, our home here in Los Manos, uh, Laguna. But right now, there's a thunderstorm going on. So you might hear in the background some thunder. Uh, but uh, uh, let's go on. And uh, I really would like to congratulate the brave souls of uh, the members of the uh, CEU Presidential Committee on Culture and the Arts for doing a live broadcast. There are many firsts that we are doing this year. And as Ricky said earlier, this is the first virtual university convocation that we have in the university. The first one was, of course, in uh, 2009 that we had our first uh, university convocation. Uh, and this convocation we hold as a celebration of our founding anniversary. And this year, we are 113 years old. In 1907, when the university was uh, founded, was established, the Philippines was in a struggle from a foreign rule. Well, this year in 2020, we are also struggling from a foreign ruler, except that this time it's not a country that uh, is a foreign ruler, but a um, virus that we cannot even uh, see. Uh, many, however, of the effects of this virus that we cannot see are evident, the empty classrooms, the closed uh, commercial uh, establishments. But um, there are also many things uh, that, uh, that many effects of this virus that we cannot see. And this is the subject of our university convocation this afternoon, because our speakers will be talking about some effects of the virus the coronavirus that may not be very evident to us, even if we uh, have it. Uh, we may not be aware that uh, the virus is uh, affecting us, but uh, it may be doing that. Can you hear the thunder in my background? Uh, so we thank you very much, our uh, speakers. Uh, Ms. Lilian Nangui and uh, Mr. Michael Jimenez for sharing with us their expertise. Uh, we know that um, wellness covers many things and not just the physical well-being of uh, our bodies, but uh, everything, uh, social, emotional, and psychological. And we thank our experts for giving us uh, their insights uh, about this. We would also like to thank the organizers of this uh, convocation. It's not easy to uh, organize a convocation during this time, but uh, as I said earlier, we have very brave souls among our um, members of the Presidential Committee on Culture and uh, the Arts. So we have... Uh, the participants as well coming from the CEU Manila Singers who are uh, with us. Also the members of the CEU Folk Dance Troupe as well as our concert band. And we thank them for their participation. Uh, we also thank our host, uh, Ricky uh, Rosales, if you are missing him in the ABS-CBN broadcast, he will be very present in many of our events here in uh, CEU. There are many, many details that we have to attend to in this kind of a program, and we thank everyone 
uh, whose names we may not have mentioned for doing the work. A special thanks, however, to the uh, top organizers, that is Professor June Iran, who is the head of our Conservatory of Music, and Dr. Carlito Olaer, the vice president, our vice president for, um, for student uh, affairs. Uh, in this uh, program, we um, want to emphasize that the primary objective of the university during this year is not really just continuing education and continuing engagement of all members of the CEU community. It's to keep everyone uh, safe and to preserve the health of everyone and to keep uh, the well-being of everyone also um, uh, uh, robustly. And uh, so we know that uh, we cannot continue with engagement and education if we don't have a good well-being. So again, welcome. Uh, let us learn from the insights that will be given to us by our speakers. And again, we thank them uh, from the CEU, in behalf of the CEU community. Thank you to our speakers and thank you to everyone who organized all the many, many details that has to go into this kind of a program. Thank you. Thank you very much. What an inspiration. And uh, that proves, Madam President, that even lightning and thunder cannot hamper the conduct of our university convocation. So, Professor Jun, what's next uh, for us? Yes, sir, Ricky. And uh, I just want to reiterate uh, that uh, CEU uh, is fully online as what our president has just mentioned and that program is called the uh, CEU Engage no? yes. uh, with the following principles uh, to protect the safety and promote the well-being of all members of the community and of course to sustain the academic experience and assure that the active engagement of the members of the CEU community is with one another and with the university undertakings yes and uh, okay uh let me introduce you. It's my pleasure to introduce to you right now the different cultural groups of the Philippine, uh, of the Presidential uh, Committee on Culture and the Arts. You know, uh, through virtual performance, I am really uh, impressed with the uh, craftsmanship of our uh, students in doing this uh, uh, virtual uh, performance. You know, a, a lot of them are really uh, doing creativity, and of course, the editors. Uh, I, I really. I want to congratulate the editors for this. You will see. Uh, please listen to this, uh, our first uh, uh, invited uh, performer. Uh, the CU Singers Manila is one of the active cultural groups at the university. Recently, they garnered numerous awards in the international choral scene. They won four gold prize awards, category winner, and Grand Prix finalist at the 8th Bali International Choral uh, Competition and Festival and two gold prize awards, an excellent performance of the piece Ave Maria by Daniel Elder. It's a 21st century arrangement. And uh, at the recent uh, 12 Orientale Concentus International Choral Festivals and Competitions, Singapore. And this afternoon to perform a virtual choir performance of, uh, of Your Love by Jim Brickman. Please welcome the CEU Singers Manila. Your 
Wow, what a soulful rendition of your love by Jim Brickman. Thank you, see you singers Manila. And let me just inform you, uh, our dear uh, viewers from Facebook, 644 are now watching us live, uh, Facebook Live, and of course to all our viewers in YouTube and in uh, our workplace. So I'm now uh, reading messages of compliment to, uh, to uh, our performance. So you know the drill later on. You can later on post your your questions, comments as we proceed, particularly when we uh, call our speaker. All right, so thank you very much and welcome everyone. So mga kapapasok pa lamang po sa Facebook, YouTube, good afternoon and welcome to University Convocation. Now, at this juncture, we will go to call on our first speaker. Our speaker is a life coach and psychotherapist whose goal is to help particularly children and women to become successful in their relationships and personal life. As an expert in the field of psychology, she has spent more than 20 years of counseling, doing private psychotherapy and life coaching. You know, when I read her profile, I described her as a celebrity psychologist, lending her expertise in two of the largest broadcast media networks in the country, you know, the Capamilia Network and the Capuso Network. She is a part-time consultant for ABS-CBN shows such as Magandang Buhay, Umagang Kay Ganda, and Bottom Line, among others. In JMA 7, she serves in various capacities like trainer, facilitator, consultant, educational speaker, Christian counselor, relational life coach, and resident psychologist for GMA and GMA News and Public Affairs. Wow, it made me jealous. <laughs> she is also a resident life coach in Kapuso shows like Flashbook, Personalan, Love Hotline, and Protege in 2012. She also ventured in radio hosting as a former co-anchor in the program Weather at Home of DZXL 558 RMN Manila. 
She also shares her expertise to students as a visiting professor in La Salle University de Mareñas Cavite and the Asian Center for Missions. Her community work includes volunteering as counselor psychologist at the Cribs Foundation Inc. in Marikina City between 2004 to 2007 and in Onesimo Foundation Inc. Ladies and gentlemen, our speaker is an active member of various professional organizations in her field including Philippine Mental Health Associations, Psychological Association of the Philippines, American Psychological Association, and the International Society for the Study of Dissociations, among others. So, how do we cope up with this so-called new normal? To know the answer, fellow Escolarians, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our first speaker, Ms. Lillian Gee. Hello everyone. Nako, ang ganda-ganda naman talaga. Believe na believe ako. Pero sa totoo, I hope talaga that not only me would be able to learn, pero lahat tayo. I learned a lot just listening. Maganda po. Maraming salamat po and everybody, welcome po sa atin magandang panahon ngayon. Even with thunderstorms nga po, nandiyan pa tayo. Maraming salamat sa inyo po. Uh, let me try to do the share screen now so we can start. Ayan na. Ito na po tayo. You know, coping with the new normal. No? Ito ang sinasabi ko sa inyo nga. What, what's the new normal? Everybody's asking me, Ali, what's the new normal? What? can we uh, do? What can we expect with the new normal? Let me ask you, when was the last time you did something for the first time? I think last March, the first, uh, the last time I did something for the first time was to say goodbye. To say goodbye to my old normal and to really try the new normal. But let's think about it. During this time, two very important things helped me shape this unique, uh, this unique PCQ experience, of course. The first one was time, you know, how all the time you have, you have all the time in the world. And the second one is emotion. What are these feelings? What is going on inside you? Um, we can. In the statistics lies the human cost of the pandemic. From the death of friends and family to the physical effects of infection in the mental trauma and fear faced by almost everyone. Everybody is so afraid. From the very beginning of March, everybody was so afraid what is a uh, coronavirus. We hear of death, we, hear, we heard of celebrities having coronavirus and we fear maybe it might affect us. And many of us have family and friends who really died uh, because of this coronavirus. Just this afternoon before coming on, on, on air, I just got a phone call that, you know, I don't know if you know her, uh, uh, Mrs. Vera Perez Maceda just, just passed away today. So many of us have friends, family, loved ones, and we know of celebrities who passed away due to this uh, in, uh, pandemic. And, you know, it caused us mental trauma and fear. But sadly, criminals and hawkers are also exploiting this situation. And there have been a significant, and there has been a significant rise in coronavirus team malicious website. Marami nagbebenta kung ano-ano, di ba? Na anti-coronavirus. But actually, are they really? So hawkers are really selling on the darknet, many of which are just aimed at accessing your personal data. Social distancing and lockdowns have also prompted altruistic behavior, in part because of the sense that we are all in this together. And you know, I know of some community, instead of, you know, castigating or labeling those with coronavirus uh, uh, homeowners, they would send food and be kind and leave them at the, at the gate of those who are corona uh, 19 positive. But the downside is, of course, the self-isolation or social lockdown. You know, there are symptoms of traumatic stress, confusion, overthinking, anxiety, and danger. 
But the new normal, how, how has life changed due to the due to the COVID nineteen? Many of us used to just hug each other and, and uh, shake hands with each other before, but right now, no more. Now we don't want to anyone anymore touch the hands of people we love. We're very very careful. Either we ask them to wash hands, we wash our hands, or we always use alcohol. So touching hands or touching someone is now something that is not any more common. That's the last thing that we have done before this coronavirus happened. And of course, in in the Filipinos in the new normal, right? When we go to the palenque, when we go to the grocery, we see distancing. Kung ayaw makipag-distance sa atin, tayo ba, you know, we throw this dagger look and we twitch and then our body so that hindi tayo maging malapit. At least we try to be one meter away from each other so we can uh, stop the spread of the virus. We stay safe. Nandiyan yung kailangan. Hindi ka naka eye shield, but the face shield. The face, the whole face. Maliban yan, meron ka pa face mask. And most of the time, people also wear gloves for preventing touching the virus. Sabi nga nila, yung dating guwapong artista, yung dating magandang artista, nagiging iba na. Gone are the high heel days. Gone are the well uh uh, well, uh, blow dried hair style na meron pa tinatawag extension. Wala na, ngayon wala na. If you check on the Instagram of all these celebrities, all of them, they long to go to their parlor. Why? Because this is a new normal. You have a bad hair. You have a face shield, a full face shield. You have a face mask. You have gloves. And of course, how can you sanitize your expensive leather shoes or leather bags? Diba? We have to wash them when we go home. So how, how do you wash your expensive leather bag? So ngayon yung madali na lang gamitin. But of course, I love it so much when I see men. Men right now are carrying hand sanitizer, are carrying alcohol. It used to be women. It used to be just, you know, hanging on the bag of women and then the husband or the boyfriend or the significant others will just say, honey, pinging na ng uh, sanitizer. But right now, it's not anymore. Right now, even the men, have their own small pocket size sanitizer or alcohol. And you know, they don't anymore go too much for the expensive shoes and bags. Most of them are wearing socks and or just wearing uh, uh, an ordinary slippers. So what's wrong with, you know, overthinking? Because of all of this, we tend to overthink, you know? What will happen tomorrow? May trabaho pa ba ako? Will I graduate? What will I do? Diba? How can I look for a job? The scientific term of Overthinking is rumination. All it, all it, thinking, all it, all it. It is uh, rumination is the tendency to repeatedly and observe obsessively uh, go back to certain thoughts. Overthinking is linked to psychological problems like depression and anxiety. Overthinking also causes mental health to decline. And as our mental health declines, the more likely we are to overthink. Diba? If our mental health is healthy, the less chances we will overthink. Let's see, alam natin i-handle yan. But as we overthink and overthink and overthink and think of things, the process of overthinking, you know, about the same thought over and over again can not, can cause unhealthy, uh, mental stress on us. So the more we are stressed out, the more we tend to think and to overthink. Let's go first to fear. In this time of, uh, you know, pandemic, everybody's afraid, no? Afraid, well, afraid or anxious. Let us get into the difference. Fear is, you know, there is a stress response from immediate danger. Walang iniba, when you go swimming and you see a shark, of course, matatakot ka at bibilisan mo, diba? But anxiety is, Stress response just from your thoughts. For example, you go swimming. Wala naman ikaw nakikita ng isa. Pero in your mind, ako may shark, may shark, may shark. Kakaini nako, kakaini nako. That is anxiety. You know, a little anxiety is okay. Wala talaga ng problema kung may anxiety tayo, no? Fear has a purpose: self-preservation. When there is real objective danger, you know that is staring at you face to face. Fear is what will kick in on you. And uh, make you in uh, and help you decide on a flight, takbo, or a fight mode. The quick chemical response of the other 
from the older part of the brain has helped both the animals and humans survive. This is fear. But anxiety is thinking na may mangyayari even wala pa siya. Anxiety, is, as I mentioned, is really okay. It helps prevent. You know, it helps you to plan ahead. But too much of anxiety is not healthy. It's not okay at all. Stress and anxiety can lead to increased alcohol consumption as well as an increase in domestic and fa family violence. In Jingxiao, a, Jing a, uh, a town near Wuhan in Hubei province, reports of domestic violence during the lockdown in February 2020 were more than triple the number reported in February 2019. That is China. But right now, I just had a, a morning interview for a TV show because the, the data, the numbers of abuse, domestic violence, domestic abuse happening during the lockdown has tremendously spiked up. Meaning to say, not only in China, but in our own country, because everybody is locked down, everybody's at home, they don't know what to do, they overthink, they are depressed, they are anxious. It builds up. Nagkakaroon sila ng stress. Nagkakaroon sila ng anxiety. Doon napapalakas ang alcohol consumption nila. Sabihin natin, hindi pwede bumili, no? But you know what? If you look at the uh, social media during the times that we cannot go out or, or alcohol is banned, a lot of people are reacting. Why? Because, you know, of the stress and anxiety, hindi nila alam nung gagawin nila. So most of them, either they turn to drugs or they turn to alcohol, okay? Or, nandyan na. Family or domestic violence. Maski sa Pilipinas, sobrang tumaas siya. The numbers increased. Very, the number increased highly during uh, the pandemic. So these are the symptoms of anxiety. Of course, you feel nervous, and tense, they are restless or tense. Someone who, uh, who is always shaking their legs, shaking their legs. You might say now, this person has a bad behavior, no? shaking legs. Of course. But this person might be feeling anxious. Okay? Restlessness. Ball pen flipping them can be a sign of anxiety or anxiousness. A sense of impending doom, danger, or panic. For example, it's going to rain. The sky is so dark. Nako, mamiya, sobrang lakas na yung ulan. Mamiya, yung bubong namin, mawawala. Na. Mamiya, magkakaroon na ng baha, maraming maiistranded. Diba? Most of us, when we know it's going to rain, all of us, most of the time, we think, ah, magiging traffic na, mahirapan na umuwi. Diba? But it's happening. It's true. So, as I mentioned, anxiety is okay from time to time. People who are anxious have increased heart rate. Pum, 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 pum. Ah, ah. They tend to inhale. They have forgotten to exhale. That is why the increase in heart rate. When you are anxious, always be mindful of your, you know, inhalation, how you breathe. Because most people who are anxious tend to breathe in and forget to breathe out. Nandiyan naga, kaya nandiyan sila naga hyperventilate. All in, they don't know how to breathe out. So what's the best way to deal with hyperventilation? The brown bag. Get a brown bag, inhale, exhale. Monitor your breathing, inhale, exhale. People who are anxious have increased sweating, no? Sweating of the hands, sweating ng ano nila, ulo nila, increased sweating. Weakness or they're lethargic, no? Parang wala akong magawa, eh. O natatakot, trembling. Nandiyan na, dapat tingnan tatay ko. Okay? Nandiyan yung trouble focusing. Nandiyan yung gastrointestinal problem. Walang problema, pero sumasakit ang dyan. And they have the urge to avoid the treatment. Okay? Iniiwasan nila. Anxiety facts. Risk factors of anxiety include genetics, brain chemistry, and life events. So 40 million American adults have an anxiety disorder because I cannot get a good figure for us. Women are twice as likely as men to have an anxiety disorder. Only 36.9% of people affected seek treatment because they just brush it off. Walang kwenta. Okay lang yan. Anxiety coping with stress, fear, and worry. Understand your anxiety. Saan ba nang gagaling ito? For many people, the uncertainty surrounding coronavirus is the hardest thing to handle. Kailan tayo makakalabas ng normal? Kailan ko mapupuntahan ng aking mga magulang? Kailan ko sila mayayaka? Stay informed, but don't be obsessively, don't obsessively check the news. Stay informed. Hindi mo kailangan nakabuong araw, nakabastay ka sa news. Hindi, hindi kailangan. 
pick the site you're going to go to only. Huwag ka mapunta sa mga fake news. Focus on things you can control. Ito ba kaya ko i-control o hindi? Kung hindi ko kaya i-control, let it go. Plan for what you can do. Kung hindi ko kaya gawain ito, wala akong parang gawain ito, then don't do it. Be, be realistic. Ito lang ang kaya po. Okay? Stay connected even when physically isolated. We are all physically distant, but we can always be socially connected. Sinabi lang naman sa atin physical distancing. Eh. Wala naman sinabi social distancing. You can always do so. Kaya nga, I, I, I like what Mom President said. This is very nice. We can stay connected with one another. This is a very big move from the people at CEU, but this is one way of keeping us connected. So what if we're physically isolated, but we are emotionally connected? Take care of your body and your spirit. You don't only take care of your body, but you also take care of your spirit. Marami mga online churches, online churches na may worship, na may mass. Don't forget, as your body needs to be fed, so does your spirit need to be fed. Help others. It will make you feel better. Maliit na bagay lang. How do you help others? Yung mga nagdi-deliver, you can help them. How? Bigyan extra tip. Aside from that, ano pwede? Bigyan sila ng skyfix. Ano pa? Diba? Say me hello, good morning. It's a nice way to make others feel good. Diba? So, what are, ways, what are the ways we protect our mental health during COVID-19? Uh, of course, we have to understand. Understanding what uh, coronavirus is all about is very, very important. Kasi hindi natin pwedeng, uh, we cannot go on living in this kind of world when we don't fully understand what is really coronavirus. Is it the virus? And, and then, ano pa? Wala na. Alam ko lang virus siya. No. Understanding how the coronavirus pandemic and understanding the measures so we can prevent, help prevent the virus transmission. And it will help us to take care of our mental health. Para hindi yung kung ano na isip, uh, uh, nakakahawa ito o hindi. Minsan hindi naman eh. Tayo lang. That's why we overthink. Hindi naman nakakahawa. That's why we have to understand fully ano ba talaga itong coronavirus. I find it strange nga eh. It, it, this is a virus, but people want to buy antibac antibacterial, antibacterial. Hello, wait. Corona, COVID-19 is a virus. It's not a bacteria. You don't need to buy something that is antibac. You have to buy something that's antivirus, not antibacteria. Iba yung bacteria, iba ang virus, ha? Okay? So number two, we have to focus on every day how to boost our mental health, how to empower ourselves how to empower our community, and how we can help others. Number three, we have to improve our mental health hygiene, okay? How we can help to create a new normal for mental well-being in the future. What Centro Escolar is doing is very, very good. You are not only doing something, you are helping your community and yourself improve and contribute to the new normal. So coping with the new normal, of course, number one, you, can all, you should always have a good night's sleep. Kung kulang sa tulog, mas mahihirapan ng mental health. Add more fruits and vegetables in your daily diet. Huwag puro karne, huwag puro junk food. Ang dami-daming tao, ang hiling ko ba sa junk food, walang magawa, di ba? But easier, buksan mo lang, kain ka lang. Buksan mo lang, soft drink ka. Try not to always eat junk food, okay? Drink water. Water is oxygen for your brain. Not always soda. Daily exercise. Ay, ayoko, ayoko mag-exercise. Hindi, okay lang ako, ayoko mag-exercise. Go up and down the stairs lang. Huwag kang mag-utos. Ikaw lang mismo umakit, ikaw din ang bumaba. That's a good exercise already. Get your daily dose of vitamins and minerals. I always talk to, you know, clients who are COVID positive and have recovered. I have been monitoring and doing uh, uh, psychotherapy to a group of frontliners na lahat sila na naka, nakalagay sa isang area before, ha? because most of them are COVID-19. It's very, very important you watch what you eat. But it's also very important that you take your daily dose of vitamin C and zinc. Make your own food instead of buying online. Remember, uh, a lot of my friends and one of the celebrity friend of mine who told me na, Ali, I think I got my COVID-19 sa mga delivery. So when something is delivered, be very careful. Sanitize it first. So if you can cook your own food, cook it. Try not to always buy online. Saves money. Quit your vices and wants. What do you want? I want to drink soda. No, drink water. Live basic because you don't know what will happen tomorrow. Ang tubig nga mahalaga sa atin. Dati tinatapon lang natin. Dati iniiwanan yung mga, you know, uh, water hydrant. Now water is very important because without water and soap, 
yan ang number one kalaban natin, ang coronavirus. So we need water. Live basic. Okay? You don't need to smoke, you know, to to ease your, to, to make you calm. There's so many ways to make you calm. You don't need all these things to, to calm you down. Breathing exercises can help. Eliminate the clutter in your life and your workspace. Kung marami kang clutter, tanggalin mo, bawas mo. Hindi kailangan yan. Huwag ang dami-daming mga isang damang kal na papeles. If you don't need it, throw it away. Sell the paper. Kikita ka pa. Turn your dreams into gold. What are your dreams? I don't have to tell you. A lot of my celebrity friends are, are, are online kasi we connect sa Instagram. What do they do? Hindi maliban celebrity, what do they do? Some like to make flowers. So meron siyang flower shop. Diba? Some like to uh, to bake. Oh, yun, so may pandesal, may pandesal siya. Some like to uh, uh, eat steak. So they're selling steak meat. Turn your dreams into gold. It's very, very possible. And trust God. Because there is nothing better than to trust Him. Because He is in control of our tomorrow and tomorrow to come. Now, it's good to focus on today, this hour, this minute, this moment. If this is all your concentration will allow you to do, just focus on the now. Just focus on today. Just focus on the hour. Just focus on this minute. Just focus. Okay? You deserve that. One major thing that the COVID-19 pandemic taught us is the importance of relationship and the brevity of life. Importante ang relationship. Kung may, meron kayong hindi naka, uh, na naging kaaway, try to think again. Is it important ba na magkasama ng loob kami? How, how will I feel if I know this person that I hated so much suddenly is COVID-19 positive? Okay? Value relationships. Personally, there are only two hands today if you ask me, what should I do during this unknown? Well, I will tell you, two hands lang. Number one, things I have control of and no control of. Two hands lang. Gusto kong mamasyal sa mall. O, lagay natin. Gusto kong mamasyal sa mall. Ano ang kaya ko i-control? Pa ako. Ano hindi ko kaya i-control? Yung coronavirus 19. So, what should I do? Ano pa ang kaya ko i-control? Yung oras ko. Ano ang hindi ko kaya i-control? Kung marami o hindi ang crowd. Always use your hands as your as your uh, guide. Maganda ang kamay natin. That's why I have two hands, the left and the right. There are only two things when you are confused, when you're anxious. Two things. Number one, things I have control of and things I have no control of. Ano mas marami? Kaya ko i-control o hindi? Yung hindi ko kaya control let it go. Okay? Hindi ko kaya, hindi ko kaya i-control. Why should I hang on to it? Nakakabigat na. Things I have control of, Maximize. Use it wisely. Apply it in your daily life. Number two, what do I need my two hands for? I need it to do the butterfly hug. Okay? The butterfly hug has always been what I have been doing since a long time. You know, I've been practicing for 30 plus years. I've dealt with children who are terrible in aggression. But whenever they're anxious, I help them. You can see this, and I'm so happy to, to, so, to see this again sa isang TV show, a Korean TV show, Okay to be not okay. Use your two hands, wrap it around your shoulder. Alam mo, kadalasan with children kasi mas flexible sila. I tell them, two hands, cross it, wrap it over your shoulder. Tap your shoulder alternately. If you're angry, if you're anxious, if you're tense, if you don't know what to do, if you're going to shout at somebody, go inside the room. Do the butterfly hug. Hug yourself. Alternately pat yourself. Believe it or not, this uh, feeling is very, very soothing. You don't have to say anything. Just hug yourself. Do it. Masarap siya. Lalong lalo na kung galit ka, lalong lalo na if you feel hopeless, lalong lalo kung hindi mo na alam anong gagawin mo. Hug yourself. If nobody wants to hug you, so hug yourself. Two heads. Butterfly hug, things I have control, and things I have no control. And of course, control what you can control. Let it go. Focus on your time, energy, on the parts of your life that we can change. And accept the ones that we cannot. Unfortunately, many people make no effort to change the aspects of their lives that they are unhappy. Gusto nila tuloy-tuloy. Even if they know they cannot control it, even if they know that this person, for example, even if they know that this relationship is not worth saving because the other person is married or the person has issue, they keep on hanging on. 
And you know, some people always, even if they're very unhappy, they think they can change things. Instead, they try to change those that they have no control of. You have no control of how your partner or significant other would behave, but you can always control how you would behave. This is always, you know, a recipe for disaster and heartache. If you think you can control the other person, that person loves you very much, and that love of yours can help that person change. Recipe for disaster and heartache. Okay, this is what I say. The butterfly hug is a technique. Okay, featured in the K drama series, it's okay to not be okay. This is already a very old technique now. Okay, na feature lang nila. And you know what? God knows our thoughts. During this pandemic, I found myself praying more during this stressful time. So again, my question: When was the last time you did something for the person? If you're alone, think about it. I'm grateful to have this unique opportunity to explore and grow with you. It's challenging, but I'm happy to be part of history in the making. Not only me, not only me, Kayo Ren. We are all part of history in the making. We are part and part of history in the making. How you will live it is your own story to tell to the next generation. So everybody, stay calm, stay healthy. Yan ang importante. Or stay healthy and stay calm. Huwag maging panic ka. Don't panic. Just stay healthy. Stay calm. Wash your hands. Wear face mask. Distancing. Huwag masyadong mamasyal. Huwag masyadong sa mga crowded places. And of course, I, you know, with everything that, that has been happening, the, the threat of the rain, the threat of another uh, low-pressure area or typhoon, yet we are here to discuss and to be with one another. At ang ating internet connection is still okay, I have only one, one, person to thank for. It to God be all glory. Maraming, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Wow! Thank you very much, uh, Ma'am uh, Lilian Gi, for that. Uh, you mentioned about, you know, you are now rocking the Facebook Live because so many of our millennial and digital native uh, friends are commenting because they have watched this uh, Korean series very popular in Netflix. It's okay to not be okay, All right? And you, uh, Mam Lillian mentioned a while ago about uh, the importance of being bonded. I also remember a line from from the Korean series that basically because we are weak, so we need to bond together. We might be physically apart, but we need to be socially together. All right, thank you. And 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 I know our 492 friends in Facebook. And I see uh, Dr. Teresa, uh, Teresa R. Perez, our VPAA, is watching. Uh, I see Dr. Lucas um, is also watching via Facebook. And there are so many people. Mamaya po, um, amin po kayong uh, babanggitin. And you can post your questions in the comments, ha? Don't forget that, right? So, our next, uh, le let's call on Sir June uh, Ayran. Sir June, what's our next part? Yes, Sir Ricky. Uh, before I uh, call our next uh, performer for this afternoon, just for everybody's information, CEU is using the platform Canvas. This is our learning management system, and we call it the CEU LIPS or CEU Learning Engagement and Proficiency System. Ayan. And uh, we are very happy that we are now on our second block. We're about to start the second block. And uh, yes, and so I would like to uh, introduce to you this second uh, cultural group of the university, the CEU Concert Band. They were, uh, they, uh, uh, they were established in April 2008 under the direction of Mr. Fredolin Parin, a former member or principal of Philippine Philharmonic Orchestra. And uh, they always perform in different major functions and events uh, uh, of the university. And also outside, uh, they are uh, consistent in performing at the concert at the park and the uh, cultural center of the Philippines. And the band is under the, the baton of its assistant conductor, Mr. Chris Samaniego. Here is uh, a member, Mr. Kim Correo, one of our students at the conservatory, uh, a member of the concert band performing a saxophone rendition of Sakin Kanalang. Please welcome Mr. Kim Correa from CU Concert Band.
Thank you very much. So big hand to Mr. Kim Correa of CEO Concert Band. One viewer in Facebook said his performance is really soothing. So I agree. Wonderful saxophone rendition of Akin Kanalang. Uh, meanwhile, Escolarians, tomorrow at 1 p.m., don't forget, tomorrow at 1 p.m., that we will be launching our newest project, the Quality People, Quality University, or the project QPQU. You might have seen this in Workplace. This is project is composed of two major groups, the uh, Employee Engagement and Productivity and Digital Citizenship, which includes digital well-being, etiquette, and digital safety. So many programs are in store for you. You have to watch out. Okay, so uh, a while ago we learned about the butterfly hub. We learned about the uh, two hands theory. Now what's next? We will welcome our second speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our second convocation speaker is a registered psychologist, a licensed professional teacher, a registered nurse, an MBA degree holder, and a board top notcher in the psychologist licensure exams. He is the resource speaker for the World Health Organization Mental Health Gap Program in Department of Health Region 3. His insights on mental health and pandemic anxiety have been featured in Philippine Daily Inquirer, Manila Bulletin, and on Rockler World. He is currently training faculty members of different schools in instructional design and educational psychology with the technical use of online learning software programs. He has been conducting classes, seminars, and webinars for uh, students and employees of different schools, organizations, and companies, including Globe Telecoms, TS Bank, Department of Education, Department of Health, Commission on Higher Education, and the GMA Network. Ladies and gentlemen, as a psychologist, nurse, counselor, technical instructor, and, and academic educator, he will engage us this afternoon on his topic, Digitization of the Human Psyche. Fellow Escolarians, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Michael Jimenez. Thank you very much. Professor Ricky Rosales. And um, to the university president and chief academic officer, Dr. Maria Cristina D. Padolina. To the vice president for student affairs, Dr. Carlito D. Olaer. To my co-guest speaker, Ms. Lilia Nanki and to Professor Rico Rosales, Head of Communication and Media of CEU, Selams, and Professor June Iran, Head of the Conservatory of Music, to the administration, faculty members, participants, good afternoon, everyone. My talk will be about the digitization and the human psyche. If I'm going to ask you right now, how are you going to respond to this question? In 2019, was this scenario normal? Was this scenario usual? What about right now, this year? Is this scenario normal? Is this scenario usual? So what is normal in 2020? We all know the answer to this question. And the answer is S, D, social distancing. In 2019, was this scenario normal? Was this scenario usual? The answer is yes. What about this year? Was that scenario still normal this year? Was it still usual this year? Not anymore. Because right now we're looking at SD, social distancing. In 2019, was this site normal? Was this site usual? Yes. What about today? Is this site normal? Is this site usual? Not anymore, because it's all about SD, social distancing. So normal in 2020 is SD, social distancing. In 2019, this was normal, this was usual, but right now, this is not normal anymore. This is not usual anymore. Because again, social distancing. This is normal today. That is normal right now. In the past, 
this is what we did. But in the present, everything has changed. In the past, well, perhaps people were inside their physical classrooms, but right now, this is what happens. Some are frustrated, some are excited, and some are confused. In the past, this is how we do it in the workplace. But right now, here in the present, this is how it happens. There are lots of changes. How come there is a change from the physical classroom to the virtual classroom? How come this has happened to us and how did we get here? How come that we once had our meetings in the physical conference room, but right now we are in the virtual conference room? Everything was going well until something happened. The coronavirus disease has entered the lives of countries, the economy it has affected, it has made an impact on many sectors, on many industries. From the pre-pandemic to the intra-pandemic, we have seen how the COVID-19 disease has somehow affected all walks of life. And how are we going to face the challenge? As the human psyche is subjected to further digitization, how do we see the relationship between digitization and the brain? So now this is the brain and the brain wants something. What does the brain wants, want? The brain wants routine. So again, the brain wants routine. We all have different routines in our lives. We set up a daily routine every day, get up at the same time every day, spend time outdoors where possible, set times for regular activities, make sure to exercise every day, have your meals at a regular time. Routines make us feel relaxed because somehow you're able to follow a structure. You're able to follow a certain schedule. And our brains love routines. Why does the brain like routines? It's because when you follow a certain routine, the brain is going to have less energy consumption. So that's how the brain works when you have a certain routine. That's why we like routine. The brain wants routine and the brain is resistant to change. That's why it's very easy for us to go back to our old habits, very easy for us to go back to our old routine rather than pursue change. Why do you think it's difficult to stick to your New Year's resolution? Why? Because old habits are hard to break. By the way, what is a New Year's resolution? When we talk about New Year's resolution, what exactly is a New Year's resolution? It's a to-do list for the first week of January. So it's very, very easy to make the New Year's resolution, but it's very hard to pursue it. Why do you think it's difficult to stick to your New Year's resolution? It's because our brain wants routine. So the brain wants routine, it's resistance to change, and we always go back to all our old habits and routine, and we don't want any changes from happening. Hence, as we undergo further changes, as we undergo further digitization, the brain is subjected to stress. And the human psyche feels the impact of this. As the brain wants routine, there is difficulty in the change process. This is something that we have to acknowledge. So if you're having difficulty, that is fine. That is normal. It's normal to undergo different kinds of emotions as we go through the process of change. So how do we address this, you may ask. Change is normal. This is what we should believe in. Just like what has been expressed in the song of Jose Marichan. Well, I know that, yes, we are all familiar with the Christmas songs of Jose Marichan, but Jose Marichan was the one who sang this song about constant change. So he said that if ever there is something that is constant, it's change in his song. And true enough, there were developments through the years. Change is normal and resistance to change is normal. However, every time change happens, our brains are put under a lot of stress. We undergo adjustment, we undergo a certain crisis. But the question right now is, if there's a crisis, can we adapt? If there is a crisis, can we adjust? If there is a crisis, can the brain restructure in this era of digitization? Is it possible for the brain to somehow restructure itself? 
The answer is yes. Our brain has the, our brains have the capacity to restructure, to become pliant, to become flexible based on the environment that we have. It's called neuroplasticity. So never underestimate your capacity to change, your brains to adapt. So we can adapt to digitization. When we learn, actually the brain changes. Every time you learn something, your brain changes. What happens when we study or learn a new skill? What happens right now while you are listening to me? When we learn, the brain changes. When you listen to me, your brain changes. The brain is made up of nerve cells, lots of nerve cells. And when you learn something, when you are going to study something, what happens to the nerve cells? The nerve cells begin to form connections. So again, whenever you're learning something, whenever you study something, something happens inside our brain. And what is that thing that happens inside the brain? What happens inside the brain every time we study something is the one that you're seeing right now. There are new nerve cells that grow. Quite amazing, quite amusing. But every time you study, every time you learn something, this is what happens. You see something, something pops up. And later on, as you keep on studying, all of these things are going to be interconnected with one another. With repetition, the nerve connections become stronger. So at first, you're not familiar with the situation, but later on, you are familiar with it because of repetition. The same with technology, the same with digitization. You have to acknowledge the fact that in the beginning, it's something which is sometimes even weird for many, sometimes something that we don't want to tap on. But remember, as we keep on repeating our exposure to digitization, this is what happens. More connections inside the brain. Hence, in order for our brains to adapt to the environment, all we have to do is subject ourselves to the experience, allow ourselves to undergo the learning process. And perhaps in the process, we are going to have lots of connections and we will be able to adapt. But how do we increase and solidify the nerve connections? In order to increase and solidify the nerve connections, it's always about repetition, repetition, repetition. If you keep on repeating what you're doing, eventually you become familiar with it. And before you know it, you become an expert. Repetition. There is a study that has been conducted. And in that study, there was a comparison between the brain of the animal that has been kept in a cage and the animal that has been set free in the environment. And in that experiment, what did they discover? What did the scientists discover? They discovered that in the end, the brain of the uncaged animals were having more, were having greater development in terms of blood vessels, in terms of blood supply, which means that if you are isolated, if you are withdrawn, if you're aloof, there is a lesser possibility of growth of the blood vessels in the brain. But if you're free, if you can do things that you want to do, then there's a greater possibility of blood supply based on that study. So if you don't do, uh, if you do not engage yourselves in different kinds of activities, there will be lesser probability of improvement. But if you run, if you play, if you undergo exercise, what's going to happen? greater blood supply. And what is the impact of this on digitization, on allowing ourselves to somehow explore technologies? It makes us improve our brains. So remember, the more experiences you have, the more, the greater the blood supply will there be in the brain. Truly, experience is the best teacher. But are simple activities enough? Or do we need challenges? Do you think it's just fine to keep on running or to do other things? In a study among mice, in another experiment, it has been found out that, so there were two groups here. In one group, the mice underwent lots of obstacles. But in another group of mice, they just uh, underwent run, uh, this kind of activity. They just ran on the treadmill. And so later on, they compared the brain of the mice who went into the obstacle and the group of mice who just engaged in the treadmill running. 
And what did they discover? Which of the two groups have more developed brains? Which of the two groups have better brains? They have found out that the animals from the complex environment had 20 to 25% more connections per nerve cell. They found out that those animals that have undergone lots of obstacles have better connections in the nerve cells in the synapse of their brains. And so what is the implication of this on us? It means that from their discovery, if you want to have a better brain, you have to undergo lots of obstacles. If you want to undergo these obstacles, then that's good. So again, remember, a person who had undergone lots of obstacles in their lives will have better brains instead of just running in the treadmill. So if you're asking right now, why are you very strong? If you're asking right now, why are you resilient? You are strong. You are resilient. Why? Because perhaps in the past you have undergone lots of obstacles in your lives. And that's the reason why you are very strong right now, because of those challenges that you had in the past. So remember, the more obstacles, the more challenges, the more hindrances that we have, the better we will be able to prove our perseverance, our persistence, and our grit. And so we have to thank ourselves and thank perhaps the world and thank, thank perhaps the environment for giving us the challenges in the past. So again, the more obstacles that you have, the better brain you will have. And this has been proven in the experimental laboratory of our researchers. So obstacles, we now conclude, build connections. Challenges make us stronger. That's why we need to embrace these challenges. Hence, we should undergo the change process. Our brains have adapted through the years of technological evolution. And this reminds you of what, by the way? So this picture that you're about to see reminds you of what? Reminds you of changes. Look at the antique doorbell and how it has progressed through the years. So remember that there are technological advancements and we human beings, we the human species, keep on adapting, keep on adjusting. Otherwise, if we are not going to adapt, we will just become dinosaurs. We will become extinct. So changes are important in our lives. Remember that time that you were using this when it's dark? And through the years, it has progressed. Through the years, it has developed. And right now, what flashlight do you use? The flashlight that you use right now is this one. The flashlight that you use right now is that one. So remember that the changes that we experience are actually shaping us, molding us to become a better human species. Because of these technologies, we are able to somehow make our lives better. However, there are difficulties along the way. So nevertheless, our lives became better. You can see the flashlight, the electric fan, the LED lamp rolled into one, together with the solar panel, perhaps. You can see electric fans on uh, which are uh, using the, the energy, energy source from the cell phone and lots of innovations in terms of technology. And in the field of education, what we're experiencing right now is, yes, you remember this when you were young. You remember this perhaps when you, when you were in grade school or in elementary or uh, high school, or perhaps as you move through uh, college, you were, you were very happy when your notebooks were thinner. And yes, later on, it became electronic. We always undergo changes, so we should adapt to change. And uh, as uh, Bill Gates had uh, made a vision many years ago, his vision was a computer on every desk and in every home running Microsoft software. Computer on every desk in every home, that was his vision. But perhaps he has underestimated his vision because right now we just don't have a computer in every desk in every home, but instead, we have a computer at the palm of every hand. Changes are important in life. 
But the thing here that we have to remember is that change doesn't happen overnight. It's not an overnight thing. Change is a process more than an event. So remember the time that we were using this and later on we were able to adapt. So we should normalize our reaction to whatever change that is happening around us. But how do we facilitate change? How do we go from point A to point B? When you lose the past to face the present, we undergo the grief process by Kubler-Ross. So if you're having adjustments right now because of the, your workplace or because of school, or perhaps you're a parent who's working from home and at the same time you're doing homeschooling, you're having complex roles right now, and somehow you have ambiguous, uh, ambiguous roles inside the house, there are challenges that you're bound to face. So remember that as we leave one point to another point, we undergo the grief process, and the grief process is something that is universal. So right now, I would like to tell you about the stages of grief that we undergo as a species from one point to another point, from the pre-pandemic to the, to the intra-pandemic era by looking at the model of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. The very first stage in the change curve is known as denial. So when we heard about the lockdown, we said, no, this isn't happening. When we learned about the quarantine, no, this isn't happening. When people learned about Online classes, no, this isn't happening. Uh, we will return to normal by August. We will return to normal by September, by October. We were all saying this isn't happening and that's just fine. It's part of the process. So if you think you are still in denial, you're saying that you're not leaving, I don't want anything to change, I'm not going to change, that's just fine. It means you're undergoing the process, which is the first step in the change curve. So now the first thing you undergo is denial. This isn't happening, this isn't real. Everything will return to normal. Let's just wait. Everything will be back to where it was before. We want the old normal. I want physical classroom. I want physical conference room. But then again, it doesn't happen. And one day we ask ourselves, why me? We ask other people, why this? We ask, the, the, the everyone we meet, why now? We even ask God, why God? Why me? Why this? Why now? Why God? And so we undergo anger. So right now, if you're undergoing this kind of emotion as you tackle with technology, as you tackle with digitization, as you tackle with online classroom, as you tackle with online conferences, and as you experience Wi-Fi, poor Wi-Fi connectivity, it's okay to be angry. It's okay to feel that anger, but you have to know how to manage your anger. There's nothing wrong with anger because it's trying to tell you something. But the bad side is if you are not able to control your anger. So there are kids who have experienced anger and sometimes it becomes unproductive for them. Some kids uh, cannot deal with uh, new, uh, new technology or digitization, so it's very important for us parents, for us uh, friends, to talk to them about anger. Uncles, aunts, talk to them about anger. What, what do you feel about the new technology? What do you feel as, you're, as you undergo this kind of digitization? And just the same with us as adults. As adults right now, we have to ask ourselves, why am I angry right now? If you will notice, it's very easy for many of the people right now to become impulsively angry. Some of you are immediately, uh, some, some of us are imme immediately yell at people. Some of us may immediately shout, why? Because anger is something that we experience right now, not because we're very angry, but sometimes the anger is just superficial. Beneath the anger is sadness. Beneath the anger is frustration. So the next time that you're talking with someone and that someone is very angry, try to understand that person. Because that person who may sound angry is actually frustrated. That person who is very angry is actually sad. That person who is very angry is looking for solutions to problems. And the fact that we are forced to stay at home also adds up to our anger. Imagine, uh, three studies have shown that longer durations of quarantine were associated with poor mental health, specifically post-traumatic stress. 
symptoms, avoidance behaviors, and anger. So anger hides the many emotions that you carry. So it's very important to ask yourself, I'm angry. Why is this? Am I really angry or is it just, is it just frustration? Is it just uh, uh, sadness? What is this anger all about? Now from anger, you're going to move to the next stage, which is bargaining. In the bargaining stage, you're going to tell yourself, if only I did something in the past, then this would not have happened. So first you say, no, this isn't happening. Next you say, why this? The next thing you know, you're telling yourself, if only I did something in the past, then this would not have happened. If only I can return to January 2020. If only I can return to 2019. This is what I'm going to do. Are there times right now that you're telling yourself that I should have done something last year? I should have done something this year. If you're telling yourself that, that's what we call bargaining. And this is an opportune moment for each one of you. Why? Because this is a time wherein you're going to learn lessons. So if you're telling yourself, I should have done this last year, then that is the lesson that you can derive from that. The good thing about bargaining is that you're trying to postpone your sadness. The good thing about bargaining is that you're trying to look at your past and somehow making a wish. But you also have to remember that we cannot change the past anymore. If ever there is something that we can change, it's the present. As Ms. Uh, Guy has stated earlier, we have to live in the present moment because this is the one that we have to cherish. We have lots of, we have lots of anxieties about the future. We have lots of regrets about the past. We should somehow look into the present moment. We should tell ourselves that, hey, this is the one that matters most. So if there are lessons that you have learned, apply it in the past so that you can change your future. I should have studied this, then this should have had happened. Bargaining, however, is good because it gives you a chance to regain control. And bargaining, as I said, postpones your sadness. So from denial, anger, bargaining, you may move on to the next one, which is depression. And how do you know that you may be suffering from depression? As we have heard right now in the news, there are people who suffer from depression. There is an increasing incidence in terms of depression. Depression is on the rise due to the ECQ that has just transpired. And how do I know? And you may ask yourself, how do I know I have depression? Number one, your thoughts. When you think, do you have difficulty concentrating? Do you think very slowly or do you overthink? That may be a problem. That's one of the symptoms. Number two, you cannot gain enjoyment anymore. You are not happy anymore with the things that you were once very interested. Number three, your mood is very sad. You keep on crying. Number four, you have lost energy. You are weak. You don't know why you're waking up in the morning. Number five, you have lost your self-worth. You blame yourself and you look at yourself this way. Number six, in terms of movement, you don't want to move anymore. You have motor retardation and you are restless. Number seven, you are overeating or you are under eating. Number eight, you are oversleeping or you are undersleeping. What kind of depressed person are you? And number nine, you have thoughts to harm yourself. These are the nine signs and symptoms of depression. And, there, and for someone to be diagnosed with depression, they have to somehow have five out of nine symptoms and those symptoms should have a, had appeared for two weeks or more. So you try to somehow check on yourselves and when you feel sad, when you feel angry, ask for support. Be truthful about your feelings. Remember that the reason why you're very strong right now is because after all the problems that you have had in the past, why are you very strong right now? It's because whenever you have a problem in the past, you immediately talk to your friend. So talk about it. Label your emotion so that you are able to manage your emotion. Your emotions should not gain power over you. You should be overpowering your emotions. And how do you overpower your emotions? You label it. You say, I am sad, I am angry, and you talk about it. You don't need to befriend the whole world. You can befriend just one person who is going to sincerely listen to you. And that one person, even though that person cannot solve your problem, merely talking to that person is enough. And then you will feel relieved. Show your true colors. 
Show your weakness. Talk about your sadness. Because vulnerability is also a sign of strength. Show your weakness so that people will know that you need them. Cry if you must. Studies have shown that crying leads to relief. So it has been shown in research, so keep crying, and then you're going to feel relieved. And once you cry, and once you're strong, it's now your time to help other people. Be the light to shine on other people. Help yourself so that we can help others. Think not just about ourselves, but think about other people. If someone tells you, hey, you know what, I'm very sad, then perhaps you are going to say, okay, I understand that you're sad. You have to acknowledge their feelings. It's very important to talk about feelings, acknowledge feelings, and tell them you are there for them. Tell them that you will never leave them. Tell them that you are going to stay. And tell them, I will be here when you feel like being quiet when you need to speak your mind. I will listen and I will be here when the laughter turns to cry Winning and losing and trying will be together. Cause I will be here. Those are magic words. I will be here. I will stay with you. So whenever people, um, you have to put feelings into words because it can decrease our emotional experiences. So say it, you have a problem with the internet? I'm having a problem with the internet. I need to talk to someone. Hello, I'm having problems with the internet. I'm very angry at my internet service provider. Okay, let, let me talk to someone. You know what, let me share with you that I'm very angry at my internet service provider. You talk about it. You talk about your sadness. Immediately get someone who, is uh, sincerely going to listen to you and you will see how you will feel relieved. Sometimes we have this poor perspective about things, so we need other people in order to shine light, shed light on other perspectives. After all, we have to be strong right now during the COVID period or else our sadness will turn into major depressive disorder and major depressive disorder may turn to suicide. Worldwide, there are, according to the World Health Organization, 300 million people suffer from depression worldwide. 3.29 million Filipinos suffer from depression. And this has increased because of this pandemic. So we always need to support one another. We need to say that I will stay. And we have to stay. Let them cry. So let them... Uh, let, let yourself undergo the process. And once you have surpassed that stage, you will now be in the acceptance stage at last. So this is the new technology. I have to do this. This is digitization. I have to learn this. And it's now time for you to move on. Sir, 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 I'm not yet happy. Is that acceptance stage? I'm not yet happy. Is that acceptance? Yes. Even though you're not happy, acceptance is not necessarily a happy or uplifting stage of grief, remember that. So you can say that, yes, I am the acceptance stage, but that doesn't mean I'm joyful, I'm elated, but I am at last in the acceptance stage and I am willing to learn. How do you perceive this crisis? How do you cope with this crisis? From previous technology, we move to new technology. So as we move from the previous to the new technology, remember that at first we will be in denial. If you are still in denial, or if you know of people who are still in denial, help them. How? Information. Communication. If right now you are undergoing lots of anger, bargaining, blaming yourself, depression, how are you going to help yourself? And how will you help someone undergoing all of these overwhelming emotions, emotional support? And if you are already in the stage of acceptance, and if people around you already have embraced digitization, the new technology, online learning, 
online meeting, all of these things, it's time for guidance and direction. Why? Because it's all about sustainability and growth. This is the model that you may have to follow in order to somehow move through the transition very smoothly and to find meaning in the midst of challenges and perhaps learn new insights. And as you accept, you appreciate the essential because despite the pandemic, this is still a wonderful world that we have. And as we do that, we discover life's lessons and remember, our brain wants routine. Our brains, does, uh, our brains don't want any change, but there is a power that you need in order to make that transition. And that is will power. We have done that in the past. We will do it again. And we will keep on fighting. And so this will be our fight song and we will embrace the change and we will embrace the new technology and human psyche will now embrace digitization, not two different entities, but as one. Thank you very much, that's all. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Michael. What a wonderful way to close your speech. And our 342 viewers on Facebook and our 142 viewers on YouTube and counting, and of course, our viewer in workplace, you know, many of them can relate. For example, Sabini Tiny Klein, Tiny Klein on uh, Facebook Live, Sabine, I can relate much. Thank you. I just would like to, before I call her, I just would like to just, uh, you know, read one message from Workplace of Massachusetts. And Sabine Lorraine Joy Laron, Sabine, good day. It's, just, it's such an honor to witness this convocation. Good luck to the organizers, see you, many singers and speakers. Thank you, CEU, for this wonderful event. It's very inspiring, and I am learning a lot. Congratulations to all, and stay safe, everyone. All right, so thank you, Sir Michael. And I think let's move on now to the next part of our program, Sir June. Yes, that was interesting. Thank you, Sir Michael. And uh, I just want to inform everyone that uh, CU is in a block system where the whole semester is divided into four blocks. Each block is divided into five weeks, and the students have a minimum of three subjects per block that they can attend to at their own pace. Yeah. So our last... Uh, performer for this afternoon is the CEU Folk Dance Troupe, one of the resident performing groups of CEU under PCCA and was able to perform in different productions at the CCP. Recently, the, the folk dancers performed together with different school-based dance company at the opening ceremony of Asian Games, Southeast Asian Games last year. And uh, for this afternoon, they will perform Pol Kabal, a lilty dance that combines polka and balls from Quezon province. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the CEU Folk Dance Troupe.
Thank you very much, the folk dancer troupe. What a wonderful performance also. All right, so again, we say thank you and we say good afternoon to all our viewers now watching to us via Facebook Live, our 353 audience. And of course, uh, to our uh, viewers via YouTube and in our workplace. Don't worry if we still have time later on, we're going to, because we are being flooded now, ladies and gentlemen, with a lot of comments, compliments, congratulations to uh, the PCCA. Of course, we read all of your comments and later on, if you st still have time, we're going to read them on air. All right, so now, uh, this is an interesting part because you now have a chance to ask your uh, questions to our two speakers. May I invite our two convocation speakers, uh, Ms. Lilian and, of course, Sir Michael Jimenez. Hello, po, ma'am and sir. You did uh, a great job, though. No? Your topics were really uh, appreciated by, uh, by a lot of our viewers in Facebook and YouTube. And, of course, I'd like to throw the first question. And this question is no less than the president. <laughs> a, um, our president, Dr. Padalina. The question, I, I think this is a question for Sir Michael, but uh, Mama Lilian can also respond to this. How do you reconcile not being anxious with being resilient when encountering change? I mean, yeah, this is a, this is some some kind of a contradictory. You you feel anxious and, and yet uh, uh, you are resilient. So how do you reconcile that? Uh, uh, oh, okay. Well, thank you very much for that question, Dr. Padolina. I would like to segment this into uh, elements. The first one is anxious. Okay, anxious. How do you uh, how do you become resilient? And at the same time, you are not going to become anxious when there is change. Okay, let's look at change. Change means uncertainty. Change means unpredictability. So remember that the higher the uncertainty, the higher the unpredictability, the higher the anxiety. Therefore, whenever change is happening, your anxiety goes up because things become uncertain, things become unpredictable. That's why when there is this COVID pandemic, we all became anxious because everything is uncertain, everything is unpredictable, that's why. How do we become resilient? If the root of anxiety is unpredictability and uncertainty, in order to become resilient, we have to set a sense of certainty, a set of predictability. Hence, we have to make a plan. And that's the reason why, if you want to become resilient in times of change, you make a plan. Because the greater the plan, the lesser the uncertainty. The better the plan, the lesser the unpredictability, the, letter, the lesser the anxiety, and the more resilient we can be. So again, it's all about the plan in order to bring down anxiety levels. Uh, uh, b before I, I, I uh, uh, throw in to, to Wangi, can you talk a little bit more, sir, on the, how do I make it certain? Uh, okay. What specific actions do I yes. can do to make it, you know, a big, because uh, we can believe that the only certain is uncertainty. Yes. But it seems in your answer that there are ways for us to yes. be Can you tell us more that, about that's that? A, that's a very good question. And I will only, see, only answer this with one word. Okay, just one word. Remember, if you want things to be, to have a certain certainty or predictability, one word, routine. You have to follow a certain routine. So for those people here who are anxious, please make sure that you have your own routine. What time are you going to wake up? What will you do tomorrow? What time are you going to do this? You have to have a schedule. You have to have a structure. And routine is also very important for people who undergo post-traumatic stress disorder. Sometimes if you have undergone post-traumatic, uh, if, you, if you have undergone a very stressful situation, it's best for you to somehow go back to your routine so that you will have a sense of certainty and a lesser level of anxiety. So again, if we want to be very specific, it's number one, routine. Right. Uh, Mamilian, do you have your own thoughts on this, Mamilian, uh, on that particular question, the, the reconciliation being, being anxious and... Uh, resilient and, and sir michael's mentioning about routine that's, that's a very good way of putting it no routine to become certain uh, do you have your own thoughts ma'am ah uh, tama naman si mr uh, si sir michael kasi sa totoo kung may routine ka ibig sabihin you're prepared 
if you're prepared and you have planned, mas malalesa ng ano anxiety mo, di ba? Kaya ka lang naman, the reason why a person has high anxiety is because the person is uncertain to do what's going to happen. They don't know what moves, what's the next move. So when they have planned, that means to say, they already have ideas what to do and to go out it. Therefore, that will lessen their anxiety. And I really believe in that. Uh, routine is very good because routine means to say, you have planned. Routine means to say, you have structure. Routine yeah. means to say, you have an you have ways to on how to motivate yourself not only mentally but physically as well. right so yes it's a very very good uh, I, I think it's a very good idea and team as, as if you both are saying that do not allow each day to pass without planning what to do and and and, and if Basically. you have yeah and if you have this plan be consistent of this plan because somehow it will shield you from you know uncertainties that might come along the way for me, yes, because, you know, having clients who are depressed and suicidal, it would be nice. You know, I can see the little uh, the little steps of them recovering when they start telling me, Doc Ali, you know what? I started to go to do my exercise. Really? I started to go to the gym again. I started <laughs> to check my old clothes. And if they start saying that, and but, you know, sometimes, uh, remember, uh, we were talking of someone with a depression, and sometimes they will fall short of that, Right? They will start something, they will fall short. That's very, very natural. And as therapists, we should encourage our client. No, 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 it's okay. If you, you feel lazy today, you don't want to go to the gym, that's fine. So what do you think will motivate you next time to go to the gym? Instead of saying, I, I mean, you're, you, uh, you again did not go to the gym? No. What, uh, what do you think should be a good motivational factor for you hmm. next time to want to go to the gym? Diba? Sometimes some will say, I because my gym instructor is very strict. So what if your gym instructor is strict? What do you think can you do? What are the things you can handle? Things you cannot control? Things you can control? Two hands. Mm. Okay? And that's how we equip them as well. Because, you know, I, I like that's it. Right. Routine is very good. A very, very good. It's really very, very good. But again, uh, Sir Michael is right. If you have a mind, an idle mind, have a lot of space, not thinking of anything. That is where you entertain those unwanted thoughts. That's why. You, that's where you overthink. Because there's a lot of space for you to think about what you think about, right? Yeah. So that's where. That's why I like it. Routine because right. it motivates us, mm -hmm. not only body but our brain. Thank and you. And dami pong viewers natin na nagpapapuri po sa inyo ha, like Christine, Bea, Bea Bernal, Marinas. So enlightening. Thank you, CEO, for sharing your valuable knowledge. We will treasure it as Escolarian students, right? Thank you, Christine. And then uh, to our viewers, no, on Facebook and YouTube, you still have a chance. You, you, uh, you know, uh, comment your, your questions and even, even comments we're going to read. All right, this is my personal question, Mom Paul. Um... You know, we are working and studying at home. We are basically in the comforts of our home. We are in the comforts of our own family, with our, with our family. And we know for a fact that we, when we are at home, we're in the place where we are in, a, in our tranquility and rest, so we say. We are, we are safe. It's, it's, it's a safe haven it's because it's our home. And when we are with our family members, we feel safe because we're with them. But we keep on... We keep on receiving uh, reports of anxiety, of stress, and it seems that people cannot, you know, tap this wonderful resource, the, the, the family, the home. What, what can explain this phenomenon in our, in our digital society? Kumaga, dapat, dapat hindi tayo ganun eh, kasi nasa pamilya tayo eh. Uh, at di ba, dapat, dapat nga place yun na, na uh, uh, hindi tayo stress. But what can explain this phenomenon? Sir Michael, okay. first. Okay, what can explain this phenomenon is that we are wired, our brains are wired to always think negatively. It helps uh, us to uh, survive, just like our ancestors. Our ancestors uh, were able to survive because they were always afraid. They were, they were always on the lookout for danger. And so this is part of evolution. It's evolutionary for us to always keep our minds on something which is negative because it helps us in a certain way. But the problem is if that negative uh, thought is going to 
interfere with our activities of daily living. And that's the reason why we should have a new perspective in families, in societies, in communities that instead of always focusing on the negative, we have to look at the positive side. Instead of not moving, we have to move, just like what Doc Ali has stated. Don't, uh, don't, uh, instead of not moving, you have to engage in exercise. So that's very important, the opposite of immobility. And we have to not be negative, but we have to be more of positive. We have to develop positivity inside our houses. Instead of every day thinking about anger, sadness, anxiety, and annoyance, irritation, every day we should always look for positive emotions. Positive emotions like what? Like joy, interest, inspiration, pride, serenity, love, awe, amusement, hope, and above all, gratitude. If we are going to get that mindset, shift our minds towards that, then somehow we will strike a balance between these two emotions and they will become complementary. So it's the kind of thinking we have to resist negative thinking and change it into positive thoughts. Uh, not, uh, not actually resist uh, the negative thought, but we have to somehow become Agreed. aware of uh, the negative thoughts. And at the same time, what is this negative thought telling me? If I am sad, what is this telling me? If I am anxious, what is this telling me? All so right. we have to listen to the listen to the to the emotion as well. Right, Mam Lilian, any thought uh, on that? Uh, I was thinking, kanina. I was looking. Uh, I was thinking, talaga, tama siya, no? Because in my experience, etong atong nung nag lockdown tayo. Kaya nga, I, I was telling Mayaya, you know, siya uh, nang parang hindi ko na feel. Parang daro arpan dami di counting. I have help also with the senator Vero, some mga counseling nila, parang, ha? Huh? But you know, come to think of it, tama po, tama po sa amin, Sir Michael, we have to consciously think. And But every day, every day, people do call me, why is it like this, Dok Ali? I love my family very much. I work so hard for my family. I long to have time with my family. But how come right now, magkasama kami, parate kami nag-aaway, parate kami nag-aaway. Bangayan kami ng bangayan, di ba? So contradictory. And the first thing they will always ask me, may diprensya ba ako? Kaya kanina so, sa slides ko eh, no? Hindi sa may diprensya ka, hindi. Tama eh. Our, tama po sabi ni Sir Michael, our brain are wired, okay, on negative thoughts. Pero tayo din tao eh. We expect so much. Because we, you know, when emotions are there, if I love you very, very much, it will be it will be it will be lying if i say i don't expect you to love me back diba? when emotions run high that is where clash comes in but it's not how, how often you clash with one another it's how you recover after the argument talaga mag-aaway kayo dati hindi ba natuntuwa ka pahani o baon mo i love you but hindi ka magbabaka ka na pupunta ka na sa office siya pupunta na sa trabaho Tapos paggabi, pagod na pagod ka na sa trabaho. Tapos siya, pagod na pagod na rin. Tapos natutuwa ka pa kung hinandaan ka pa niya ng hapunan. Oy, I, naku, I love you. You're so thoughtful. But again, think of it 24 hours. Pag gising mo, ah, uh, magtutulakan pa kayo. Ikaw na kayo, bawa siya na lang. Ikaw na lang, gano'n, di ba? 24-7 kasama mo siya, ha? Ibang-iba yung 24 kasama, 7 mo siya, nakikita mo. Ani, ba't gano'n ka maghawak ng tinidor? Diba parang ang pangit naman? Parang hindi ko napansin ganyan ka dati. And then the other one said, ganun pa parati na akong... It, it, magbabanga yan kayo. Dynamics yan. Yan ang tinatawag natin, human dynamics. It is energy <laughs> in motion. But again, it's not about how... It's not about the fight. It's not how many fights you have. It's how you handle the fight. Absolutely. Yan ang yeah. pinaka-importante. Oh. What I like it well. What I'm liking about this conversation is the positive vibe that I am getting from you. No? I'm, I'm getting a sense that, you know, he, uh, you have mentioned, Mamgi, about it's okay to not be okay. And I think, in a sense, that's also what Sir Michael is saying in his talk, diba? Toward, towards the end. You're saying, let's, let's embrace. That's the reason why you, you were very careful in saying, do not reject the negative things. Since, because uh, they yeah. are. They are meant to be there, right? But you just have to embrace and you just have to get ready before they, they come in, no? I, I just read some, no? Ma'am, Dr. Tita Barcelo said, may I add to the discussion, start your day with gratitude, even about small things. So it, it, it's uh, adding to our positive uh, uh, emotion. Si Maria Dina Avinante, thank you for the invite, uh, very timely po. If uh, don't want anxiety and stress, then change your thinking. 
All right. And then, si May Angelina uh, Marges Lontok. Technically, thank you din sa atin. Love the answer, according to Raymond Fortaleza. Love the answer, very well said. Embracing those uncertainties uh, will welcome you to know the meaning of resiliency. All right. And Ma'am Elvira Urhel, also congratulating us. All right. Sige po. Uh, yung questions nyo, ha? Uh, welcome po ito. You can still uh, post your questions. We still have time. I just noted here po another thing. Lagi kasing na, na, nababanggit, when we feel anxious, uh, we do bad things. That's, that's what uh, you, you, you prepare, no? Uh, can we instead do good things when we feel anxious? Uh, and I think it has also something to do with, because Sir, Sir Michael was saying we can re rewire our brain because of that, what, what that word, sir? Neuroplasticity, right? Neuroplasticity, wow, yes. So whenever I feel anxious, and I'm aware that I feel anxious, mm -hmm. Um, can I turn my actions positively instead of negative things? Yes. Is that possible? How, how can precisely, I precisely. That is, uh, that is what Daniel Goldman has stated uh, in his book, Emotional Intelligence, that um, if you want to be emotionally intelligent, the first thing you have to do is identify your emotion. And right now, uh, the very first thing you have to do is identify your anxiety. So once you are able to identify your anxiety, you ask yourself, what is the level of my anxiety? Because there is a level of anxiety that is helpful and there is a level of anxiety that is somehow debilitating. So you look for that level of anxiety which is going to be more helpful and from there you can act. Sometimes our anxiety is telling us something. Sometimes your anxiety about the future tells you to save money. Sometimes your anxiety about infection tells you that, hey, you have to wear a face mask. And that's the reason why I said, if you have an emotion, listen to what the emotion tells you. Mm. And after that, you try to somehow control the emotion, you manage the emotion, put it at a lower level, and then do something. So instead of being anxious, in, instead of being overwhelmed by the emotions, you are going to take action. Action defies the emotion. So that's what we need to do. And sabi nga ni Doc Ali kanina, no, paiba-iba yung ano, emotion natin. Minsan uh, mabait sa umaga, minsan sa hapon, nagbabago talaga. Kaya nga, yan nga yung pinaka-challenge natin. But the, the best thing about our emotions is that we should manage our emotions. And remember this, everyone, never ever make a decision when you are very emotional. Don't make a decision when you're very angry. Marami kang mabibitawan ng masamang salita that you will not be able to take back. And daming mga relationships ang nasira because of emotions that have not been managed. Never make a decision when you're very anxious. Never make a decision when you're very sad. Try to simmer down, let your emotions go down, and then talk about it. Sabi nga, Doc Ali kanina, communicate, communicate. Ang takamalaga. Doc Lilian, you have your thoughts on that? Uh, sa totoo, para sa akin na. Anxiety also, a uh, feeling of anxiousness help us to prepare ourselves well. Tama sabi nga ni Sir Michael, kasi takot ka naman wala kang pera. Well, suppose, ang mangyayari, takot ka na lang. Hindi, magsisave ako, di ba? Hindi na ako bibili ng mamahalin. I'll go basic na. So at least makakaipon ako. Ah, that's good. That's a good part of anxiety, di ba? Na-anxious ka. Pero anything too much is wrong, okay? But if you can handle it, you know what are your triggers? Okay na, okay lang. For example, alam mo na, magwawala ka na. Uh, I have a, a client who has anger issue. Babae siya, ha? In her, she her partner physically. And then she herself also don't want to. I told her, what do you want to do? First, I want to, and okay, what do you think? Sabi, if only I can shout and say, I'm angry, don't come near me. That will save them from me hurting them. I said, so what is preventing you from doing that? Sabi yan, nakakahiya. Kanino ka nahihiya? Sa kanila. Mm. Ah, so, mas okay yung mahiya ka sa kanila. E, paano kung masaktan mo sila? sila? What are things you can control? What are things you cannot control? You cannot control your anger. But what can you do? I can shout out and say, umalis na kayo sa harapan ko bago may masaktan ako. That is a good warning. That is one way of empowering the client. Oh, so whenever she's angry, she'll just say, Malisa kay sa harapan ko bago ko. Now at least there's a warning. People know that she has issue with anger and now they know how to go away. And slowly sa kanya, as she says that, that's very, very good for her. Kasi as she says it, sinasabi niya, narinig niya, naiisip niya. That's using her senses. 
that's not telling her what to do. That's she telling herself, this, I have control. This, oh. I can do. And slowly, nababawasan yung galit na. All right, very well said. Diba? Now, as much as I want, we're running out of time. Sayang, ini-invite ko pa naman, maybe in another forum, itutuloy po natin ang ating discussion. Uh, siguro, finally, we have so many viewers right now in Facebook and YouTube, not only uh, CE employees, but teachers and students who might be undergoing anxiety, depression right now. Can, 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 you, can you give us uh, a little advice uh, our message. Let's start with Sir Michael. Uh, okay, I have a very brief advice uh, for everyone, especially during this pandemic, and I call this the GRASS technique. G-R-A-S-S. Letter G, when you wake up in the morning, just like uh, Dr. Tita Barcelo has stated earlier, gratitude, okay, <laughs> gratitude. You, uh, you, you begin your morning with gratitude, that's letter G. Number two, letter R. When you wake up in the morning, you have to have a routine. You have to do something when you wake up in the morning until you sleep at night. That's letter R. So letter G, gratitude. Letter R, routine. Letter A, activity. Do something, physical activity, just like Doc Ali has stated. Exercise, uh, do, uh, do certain activities in your house. And then we go to letter S. Letter S is socialize because you have to connect with other people. Even though you are geographically dispersed, it's important that you socialize with people, with friends. You may use the internet. And the last one is letter S. The thing that we do at night, what is the letter S that we do at night? Sleep. Sleep. So we have the grass technique, yes. Gratitude, routine, activity, socialize, and then sleep. That's uh, the grass technique. Thank you, Sir Michael. Mam Lilian? Sir Michael, makichitting ako sa iyo. Yes, I like please. what Sir Michael said a while ago. I like what he said. Reach Thank out. You. Reach out. Someone is always there. Don't think you're all alone. Remember, when you are feeling sad and depressed, that is what you can think of. And you know, uh, depression thoughts is not 24-7. Neither is suicidal thoughts. There are moments, it's like, a, it's like waves. No? There are times they are very high, then they go down. Remember, you're not alone, not during this time, not during the, nor the, the last time. You are never alone. You will never be alone. All you have to do is to reach out. There, is, there are hands who are willing to hold you and to be with you. You're not alone. Very well said, Mom Lillian. I, I think this message from one of our viewers will you know, uh, close our Q&A. Sabi niya, si Lady Titania Pangilinan, sabi niya, you made me think that my weakness or anxiety can be my asset by positive yes. management of emotions. So what a way to uh, close our Q&A. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Michael Jimenez. Clap, 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 of course. And yes. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, boy. And di pa tayo tapos. Di tapos si Sir June Iran for our next part. Sir June. Yes, thank you very much to uh, our, our dear speakers. That was so inspiring. A lot of uh, our viewers and listeners are really inspired. Very timely. And now uh, to close this uh, program. Uh, may I call on our BP for Student Affairs and the Chair of the Presidential Committee on Culture and the Arts, Dr. Carlito B. Oler, to de deliver his closing remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. This convocation truly gives us a moment to stop, look and listen to what's going on in us and around us. What we thought you would only read from the pages of history books is now happening in our time. We are facing a pandemic outbreak, threatening all of us as it takes its toll every day. If we are not careful, we take the risk of harming ourselves. It is true that we are living out the scare and the fear of our lives these days, but it is also true that we can cope within our means to keep ourselves healthy, safe, and protected. But that is a choice we make or break. As we grapple with all sorts of risks and challenges, time has turned into a commodity that we wanted to serve us best. 
but apparently we cannot wish for the good old days to come back soon at home, at school, or in our workplace. And therefore, we have to convince ourselves that this new normal is here to stay for some time, for a longer time, which requires all of us to become conscious timekeepers, decision makers, health seekers, and soul searchers. Our convocation today also gives us a glimpse of the future as we enter the portals of the digital world fashioned by this new normal. Are we ready to digitize our lives and relationships? We just heard from our speakers, Ma'am Lillian Gi and Mr. Michael Jimenez, some insightful uh, ideas and reflections on ways to wellness. Remember the butterfly hug, the grass technique, routines, challenges, and plans. These ways to wellness can be our ways to wholeness. As an academic community journeying together through these critical moments of dealing with a global crisis, history beckons to write its own pages. How will history just this generation? This is the challenge to all of us. Are we ready to do our part in keeping our new world healthy and safe for ourselves and for everyone? This year's 113th founding anniversary of Centro Escolar University is a milestone to celebrate. This is the reason for our convocation today. This milestone exhorts us that as the university stood the test of time, so we shall withstand the new waves of change. To all of us, congratulations and thank you for joining us this afternoon. And now, may I invite everyone to sing the CEU hymn. Buhay ka, mahal namin, pamantasan, mapuwi sa nakilang sentro eskolar. Ika'y dambana ng pag-ibig sa bayan, at aghang na sariyang matagumpay. Kapag ang diwa ng iyong mga hinig, umagona sa puso't ibig. Sabay-sabay na ipasisigawan, mabuhay ka dakilang sentro eskolar. Mabuhay ka mahal naming pamantasan, papuri sa dakilang sentro eskolar. Ika'y dambana ng pag-ibig sa bayan, at ang kong nasariyang matagong. Centro Escolar, Centro Escolar. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, the men and women behind uh, the University Convocation 2020, of course, our president, Dr. Oler, our two speakers, Sir Lester, C. Uh, uh, Roden de los Santos, and of course, the Master Professor Junai Rock. And of course, who else will give us our final word for our audience in Facebook, in YouTube, in Workplace, no other than our president, um, uh, Padalina. Ma'am? Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Napakaganda ng ating University Convocation ngayong taon na ito. Akmang-akma sa panahon. Uh, Alam ko na napakahirap gawin ang ganitong programa sa ganitong panahon, but you did it all. You did it very well. Thank you and congratulations to everyone. Maraming maraming salamat, pati yung mga nasa backstage and all. Salamat.
Salamat sa inyo at sa ating mga tagapakinig, tagapanood. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. A smile tayo lahat para mag-screenshot ako. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do a screenshot, okay? Yes, po. All right. Got it. Yes, wave thank po tayo. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you.